What's going on guys? Jabron here from Photographers on YouTube with the review of the new uh, Flash by Yongnew YN562. So this is their uh, second version of the older Flash. I've already reviewed the older Flash which is YN560. This has the LCD screen. The older version did not have the LCD screen and it was not uh, very user friendly because of that. Size wise they're identical uh, but for extra 20 bucks this one worth every single penny over this simply because you have to basically use the LED indicators to know what power you're using it's not very user friendly um, anyway so this is the second version let's take a quick uh, look at uh, compare the size with some of the Nikon flashes and then we'll talk about some of the good stuff and some of the not so good stuff about this flash. Right, so I quickly want to give you guys a size comparison between SB700, SB910, and YN560. Um, you could tell this is 700, 910, and, and 560. Let me move 900 out of the way. You could see that YN560 is, is definitely bigger than um, SB700. Now if you compare this with SB910, there's a very slight difference, okay? So that's one thing I don't like about YN560. It's kind of bulky. It's kind of, uh, size-wise, it's kind of uh, kind of big. My go-to flash has always been um, SB700 because um, of its size. All right, so let's turn on the flash and just go over some of the uh, uh, basic uh, settings. Okay, right, so you go left and right to basically reduce the power or increase the power so on my picture sometimes you'll see flash settings like one fourth or one eighth that's that's where you know you basically control this from this is your full power and this is your slowest power which is one one twenty eighth okay now you can also increase the power in one third stops which is right here plus point three and what that means is that if you take a picture let's say at one eighth power and it's okay, but it's a little dark, just a little. You can just increase the power by, you know, one third stop instead of going one fourth because then it would be overexposed. So you can just go plus three or, um, you know, plus five, um, plus seven. Okay. So that's where you change the power from. This is your zoom button right here. I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up. So zoom is manual. Um, the flash itself is also full manual. This is not TTL. Um, mode is, you know, you, you you could shoot in manual mode or you could do off-camera flash, uh, which is your S1 and S2 mode. I've never tested that. I use flash triggers. I personally would not use, uh, I, I, I don't know how accurate that uh, the whole CLS uh, or ITTL is going to be uh, with this. So I would probably uh, not test it for important shoes. If you want to play, play with it, that's, um, that's different. All right, this uh, thing right here is for your sound, which is extremely obnoxious. So, you know, keep that off. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, it does not have the infrared AF assist, okay? This right here is your AF infra, infrared assist, both Nikon flashes. And what that means is that uh, when there's extremely low light, a red light is going to, you know, come out of this. Well, not this flash. I'm talking about the Nikon flashes. And that's going to help you with focusing. This uh, does not have the infrared AF assist, so that's a... Uh, that's a drawback. Another drawback I want to show is the rotation of the flash head. If I go in this direction, it's going to stop. Nikon flashes, I can go all the way in either direction. Okay, that's a huge plus. That's a huge plus. So if you are photographing, if you're a tall person and you're taking a shot of a kid from... Uh, you know, 
looking down, this is a little problem. You'll have to switch your hand position, which can introduce uh, camera shake. Now, if you're an event photographer, you're photographing, uh, you know, food or, or table setting from the top, you, you're going to have to change your hand position, and this is going to be a problem. So remember, this is not a professional flash, but for, you know, $60, $80, you just can't beat this. You just cannot beat it. Right, so I've had this flash for a few months now. Um, I think I got it in summer and I just did not have the time to uh, do the actual review. But the good news is that all this time I've been using this on different occasions, you know, just to test it how it really uh, fares out with some of the other flashes. I'm very impressed. I've, I've never had any issues uh, with it. Power wise, it packs uh, a punch. Uh, Danny and I, we were at this event um, a couple months ago, I believe, and uh, the ceilings were like at least 30 feet high and, you know, low light situation. So I used the flash at full power and I had no problem uh, with the exposure. Now the shot that you see of Danny, obviously it's not a portfolio shot, it's just a quick test shot, just to give you an idea that at full power, you know, F4, I, low ISO, ISO 400, you can still take... Uh, great pictures even you know uh, with really high ceiling so power wise I did not you know see any any issue um, I used this flash for a couple of hours in a wedding I shot just to see if it skips a beat no problem at all you know I, I photograph people dancing and just regular candid shots uh, I don't think it miss uh, fired even even once so for the price um, I think it's uh, it's really great now some of the stuff that I don't like is and you know understand that's obviously related to the cost uh, it does not have the um, AF assist uh, in the flash I, I think I talked about it in the in the other uh, part as well so that's one thing nothing major because even when I was shooting the wedding in, in low light photographing people dancing the camera was still able to focus but in a really low light situation like in a maybe in a club where there's no lights on at all it could be uh, an issue for you the other thing um, I had a problem with I actually tested this uh, for off-camera flash uh, photography as well so when this flash is mounted my hands probably gonna get cut off uh, when this flash was mounted on the umbrella stand or softbox stand the problem was that you cannot read what's on the LCD screen from an angle okay so I basically had to bring the stand down and then change the power like I couldn't just you know plug it in because I really can't see the power so that's uh, uh, that's a flaw I think if you're doing a lot of off-camera uh, flash photography it's not a deal breaker you, you know you have to consider the price as well you know the cheapest Nikon flash is 330 the, cheap, the cheapest Canon flashes I, I believe is like $300 this is you know 60 bucks 80 bucks so uh, for the price especially if you're starting out you cannot beat this and you know get this flash you know, learn the basics, get your feet wet, you know, get comfortable with flash photography. And then if you feel that you need to upgrade, then you can get some of the branded flash, you know. So, uh, you know, if you already have a branded flash, this could be a great backup for you. If you don't want to spend another $300 on a branded flash, this could be a great backup um, as well. So definitely look into this. Uh, the link is posted on my website if you do plan to purchase it please use that link I would really appreciate that and if you like my videos you know this video or any other video please give it a quick thumbs up and share it with your friends it doesn't hurt to share um, you know people learn you know through these videos it's it's a uh, it's a great way to share knowledge okay hope all is well and I'll talk to you guys later